Hi, Lana. Long time no see. What's it been? Eight years? Allison? What do you want? What kind of greeting is that? Aren't you happy to hear from your dear little sister? What kind of greeting were you expecting from someone whose last words to you were, Never contact me again? Wow, somebody's grumpy today. Spit it out, Allison. What do you want? I don't have the time or patience to just chat with you. Okay, okay, geez. Must be that time of the month. You have 30 seconds before I block your number. Ugh, this is exactly why men don't like you, Lana. 15 seconds. Your husband's name is Harry, right? Yeah, and? I remember him from your wedding. And at that time, I thought, meh, if he's interested in you, he's probably not at all that great of a catch. So I didn't give him much thought. But about six months ago, I just so happened to see you walking together with him in the park. And when I saw him, wow, he's actually really, really hot. So the next day, I met up with him at a hotel. <laughs> and we've been seeing each other three times a week ever since. I see. I figured that's what this was about. Wait, aren't you surprised? Our divorce was just finalized today. Apparently, he met the love of his life and needed to live his truth. So it was you, huh? I guess that makes sense. Oh, I guess I don't have to explain it then. That saves me a bunch of time, LMAO. It is what it is. I've already got a new place to live set up, and I'm going to move my stuff in tomorrow morning. So if you're going to move in with him, do it tomorrow afternoon. Roger that. Man, you don't have any luck, do you? I'm prettier than you, more charming than you. Our parents love me more than you. You must have known that. You left home right after graduating from high school. <laughs> and now it's happening to you again. Harry chose me over you as his true love. So, now you're getting pushed out of another house where no one loves you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll take real good care of Harry for you. Allison, you never told me there was a kid. Oh, yeah, her. Wait, you really didn't know? No! When I brought my stuff to Harry's house this afternoon, there was some little girl watching TV in the living room. The girl with a bob haircut and a mole on her chin? Yes, that girl. That's Harry's daughter, Natalie. What's the deal here? Don't kids always go with their moms in a divorce? Not always. In our case, it made sense for Natalie to stay with Harry, so she did. If you want more details, go ask Harry yourself. It's none of my concern anymore. Hold on! You mean I'm gonna have to deal with this kid in the house? She's just gonna get in my way! If you don't like it, you can always break up with him. We got married today. <laughs> that was fast. Well, I'm busy moving into my new place, so I'm gonna go. Lana, you have to do something about this. You take the kid. How are we supposed to enjoy our life as newlyweds with some kid in the way? Lana, you have some explaining to do. What now, Allison? What's this about us having to move out by the end of the month? I like this house. I don't want to move. What's going on? It's our second day married and there's been nothing but problems. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Stop mocking me and start giving me some answers. Ugh, Harry always was one to leave out the most important details. What do you mean? That house is actually employee housing owned by the company I work for. Really? I'm the employee and I moved out. Did you think my company would just let him keep living there? There's a new manager starting next month who needs the house. This is the worst. Oh, and by the way, employees only have to pay 20% of the market rate for rent. Just so you don't get surprised when you see how much rent is due this month now that I'm gone. Great. I guess we'll just have to move into employee housing from Harry's company. 
Well, they don't have employee housing. They don't? So you'll just have to find an apartment and pay rent like the rest of us. Um, how much is the rent going to be this month? We were paying $300 while I was there, so multiply that by five. $1,500? Wow, I am impressed, Allison. Did you do that math in your head? I don't know what kind of place you had in mind, but on just Harry's income, you're probably going to have to settle for something a lot smaller than that house. No way! And you should probably have a talk with Harry and Natalie about how you're going to handle your lowered standard of living. What do you mean? Just so you know, when we were going through the divorce settlement, it was decided that I would get all of our savings as compensation for his infidelity. So Harry's going to be pretty hard up for money for the foreseeable future. No savings? Also, his salary was lower than mine. <laughs> it was? Why is this happening to me? I gotta get back to unpacking. Good luck with Harry. Hey, wait! Goodbye. Hey, Lana. Didn't you forget something? Something really important? Did I leave something behind in the house? No, not something, someone. Uh, what? Child support. Child support? You gotta pay child support for Natalie. She's your kid, so pay up. You'll be hearing from my lawyer soon enough. Let's see, $200,000 should be enough. I'm not paying a cent. Excuse me? Allison. I have no legal obligation to pay child support for Natalie. But you're her mother! Ugh, didn't Harry tell you anything? Tell me what? I don't believe this. First, go ask Harry about Natalie. This is something for him to explain, not me. Huh? Hey, Lana, what gives? You still haven't paid the child support you owe. Don't you feel bad for abandoning your own child like this? You deadbeat mom, lol. Ugh! Allison, I don't owe any child support. Harry says we should get as much as we can from you. He's on my side. So hurry up and wire the $200,000, deadbeat. Why don't you tell that to Natalie's mom? But you're Natalie's mom. Oh, you two really were meant for each other. An inept lying nincompoop and his brain-dead ditzy mistress. Would you please stop insulting me and tell me what's going on? Fine. Really, it's Harry who should be telling you this, but since you both seem to have the communication skills of a rotten banana, I'll tell you. So tell me already. Natalie isn't my child. What? Nothing against Natalie, but she's Harry's love child. You mean he? Yes, she's the daughter of Harry's first mistress. About a year ago, Child Protective Services came to Harry and said that her mother disappeared, so Harry was responsible for her. That was the first time I heard about Natalie's existence. That sounds like a bad soap opera plot. That's why I've been going back and forth about divorcing him for the past year. It wasn't Natalie's fault. I felt bad for her. So I cooked her meals, did her laundry, all that stuff. But for all intents and purposes, Harry and my relationship has been over for some time now. Then why did you only divorce recently? That's on Harry. He knew that divorcing me would mean losing my income in our house. So he wouldn't agree to the divorce, and our relationship was at a stalemate. But then, out of the blue, who should come along but you, Allison? Me? Once Harry met the love of his life, he suddenly became much more motivated to divorce me. Which brings us to where we are now. Wait, don't tell me. Are you glad I took Harry from you? Are you happy that you got divorced? <laughs> yep. But back to the topic at hand. 
I never legally adopted Natalie, so we have no official relationship, legal or otherwise. Harry always had sole custody of her. So, now that we're divorced, I have no legal obligation to pay child support for her. No! Come on! I thought we could use Natalie to get money out of you. Now what are we gonna do? Yeah, I figured that's what all this was about. Ilana! We moved into a cheap studio apartment the other day. We all have to sleep in the same room, so I can't have any adult time with Harry. I don't have any privacy. Natalie doesn't listen to a thing I say. I hate this. Sounds like you should just divorce him. But I don't have anywhere else to go. Uh-oh. Let me guess. Mom and Dad told you not to marry your sister's ex-husband. You did it anyway, and now they've cut you off. I bet Dad threw in a pot shot at me like, don't go chasing after your worthless sister's used goods or something like that. How did you know? That's just about the only reason I could think of for you not being able to go back and live with Mom and Dad again. Lana, can I divorce Harry and come live with you? Nope. Why not? I'm moving into company housing again. Only their employees and their spouses are allowed. You're the only person I can count on. Please, you have to help me. Allison, have you ever thought of just getting a job yourself? Why would I do that? If you can't make ends meet on one income, what other choice do you have? But I don't wanna. You have two choices. Choice number one, divorce Harry and get a job. Choice number two, stay married to Harry and get a job. Is there a third choice? This is what you get for being a spoiled brat who's never had to work a day in her life. Hey, that's not true. I have so worked a day in my life. Ah, uh, yes, that one day when you showed up to work and quit an hour later? I hope you can last longer than that this time around. Lana, please! You're gonna have to get yourself out of this mess. Bye bye A few months after my divorce, my parents called me for the first time in about 10 years. They graciously invited me to move back in with them and take care of them once they got too old to take care of themselves. I guess they were planning on having Allison take care of them and they only asked me since she wasn't an option anymore. I said no and hung up. Also, apparently Allison is infertile. I guess she should have thought twice about messing around with so many guys in her younger years. Those chickens came home to roost. When Harry found out, he divorced her right away and kicked her out of their apartment the next day. She tried running home crying to our parents, but they were still mad at her for marrying Harry against their wishes and sent her packing. I haven't heard or seen anything of her since then. You're getting married, Ruby? Without even getting my permission first? Since when did you become so high and mighty? What? How do you know about the wedding? What do you mean now? I got an invitation. Do you really want my attention that much? You really are childish. This isn't going to do anything, you know. What are you talking about? I don't need any of your attention. There's no way I would send an invitation to you people. I've already cut ties. I don't remember sending an invitation either. Then what is it? Are you going to say that it was delivered by mistake? That's going a bit too far, even if you are an attention seeker. My fiancé's mother was probably the one who sent it. Even though I told her about a relationship and that I wouldn't send an invitation. She probably thinks we should make up or something. She keeps saying that you're my mother related by blood and won't listen. She probably sent the invitation anyways without telling me. It's not for me, so just throw it away, okay? Oh, is that so? Fine. To be honest, I was kind of baffled when I received this invitation. I don't consider you an ugly, useless brat my daughter anymore after all. My adorable Kristen's my only daughter now. Yeah, yeah. You've told me this before. Me, who took after my father, is a failure. And Kristen, who took after you, is a success, right? Right. 
Not only that, but Kristen graduated medical school and is now a doctor at a large hospital. You're nothing compared to her. Yes, yes, I get it. Thanks to that, we were treated differently by you as well. Kristen would get an omelet for dinner while I only got canned food. My clothes were all hand-me-downs from our neighbors while Kristen's were all new. My bedroom was the closet while Kristen got an actual bedroom that was huge. With school as well, you stopped paying for tuition once I graduated from middle school. So I had to go to a school with financial support and a dormitory, even though you paid for all of Kristen's expenses all the way until she graduated medical school. Obviously. Why would I invest money on an ugly brat that can't even do anything? We're not going to help you with your marriage in any way, shape, or form. You won't even get a wedding gift from us. When Kristen gets married, though, we'll make sure she gets a grand wedding. I wasn't expecting you to help from the start. It seems you're as mean as ever. That's why Dad left you. It what? What do you mean by that? It means exactly what it says. Dad didn't like how you treated us so differently, which is why he left at the same time I entered high school. You keep telling me that I'm a failure, but don't you have a failed marriage yourself? You what? Just who do you think you are talking to? You act all proud, but you're nothing. There's no way I'll come to this shabby wedding of yours. I'm not going to call your children my grandchildren either. But don't you have a failed marriage yourself? You don't have to come, and you don't have to be their grandmother either. I'll make an excuse to tell my mother-in-law as to why you won't come. Bye. That's what happened. And to think I went out of my way to contact her. You think she's rude too, right, Kristen? Ruby's so rude. Maybe she's acting all high and mighty because she's getting married. Not only is she ugly, but she's rude too. I feel so bad for you, Mom. You're my only daughter, Kristen. That failure is making me feel annoyed. But is it true that that pig's getting married? It has to be a lie. <laughs> even if it is true, the fiance must be even uglier than her, lol. I can't believe it. To think that ugly failure would get married before you did. That's it. I have a good idea. I'll come to that bitch's wedding and make a huge mess. <laughs> oh. What's your plan? What? I'm still technically her sister, so I should be able to get in easily, right? I'll come to the wedding and spill wine on her dress or something, or maybe even seduce her fiancé, lol. I'm way hotter than her, so it should be easy. <laughs> the marriage might even be cancelled. I was thinking something like this. <laughs> what do you think? Sounds fun, right? Wow, that does sound like a lot of fun. That's my daughter. My higher-ups at the hospital are absent on the day of the wedding, so it should be fine if I skip work for just half a day, lol. I'll just head over quickly and ruin the wedding. <laughs> oh, while you're at it, why not wear a white dress to the occasion? Oh, for real, lol? We're going to go that far? Say something like, I thought it was my wedding, so I came in a white dress. <laughs> I'll prepare the dress for you. Take a good look at that ugly bitch's face. All right, <laughs> leave it to me, Mom. Congratulations on your wedding today, Ruby. Have fun. What? Why are you suddenly so kind? What do you mean? Can I not congratulate you for your wedding? You have no right to congratulate me. Are you planning something? You never really were a lovable daughter. Never mind. I'm not coming to today's wedding. But Kristen will be there for the reception. So say hi. She's going to be a bit late since she had to prepare. What? This is my first time hearing this. She wasn't supposed to get an invitation either. She's trying to make up for me not being able to go. Kristen's a kind person. Unlike you. You know how busy she is, right? She's taking time off work just to see you. You should be grateful. Listen to me. It's rude to barge into a wedding without an invitation. Just what are you two up to? You'll find out sooner or later. 
Just leave a seat open for her, okay? I'm sure you'll be surprised. Is that so? Fine. I'll tell the people at the front. Just asking, but does Kristen know anyone from the wedding? How should I know? I don't even care who your fiancé is. Oh, I pity her then. Mom? What should I do? It wasn't supposed to be like this. What's wrong? Did you get a good look at her ugly face? She must have been even uglier when we last saw her. <laughs> I don't have time for that right now, Mom. It's unbelievable. What is it? Ruby's fiancé. It's the son of the hospital director. What? The son of the director of the hospital I work at, i.e. the next director of the hospital. Everyone here is a high-ranking member of the hospital staff. I even saw my boss back there. Isn't that a bad thing? That's putting it lightly. I know everyone here, so they recognized me immediately. What should I do? I won't be able to go to work from tomorrow. There's no way I'll be able to get off with just a scolding. They already know I skipped work. And if rumor spreads, I won't be able to work as a doctor anymore. But... Mom! Mom, what should I do? I got out of there as soon as possible, but my boss keeps calling me. What should I do, Mom? I don't know. This is your mess. I'm not the one who went to the wedding, so it's not my problem. Do something about it on your own. What? You're the one who told me to come wearing a white dress. You agreed to me barging in on our wedding. I only did what you told me to. It's your fault I got into this mess. Do something about this, Mom! Shut up. I'm not the one to blame. This was all your idea. This is none of my business. What? what You're so mean. Mom! Don't leave me! Mom! Missed call. Hey, will you stop ignoring my texts? Answer the phone. That's quite a lot of texts you sent me. I've never seen this many before. Hey, what's your deal? What were you doing until now? I went out with some acquaintances. To, it was fun. Today was an amazing day. What's amazing about it? It's been a terrible day for me. Kristen won't come out of her room. She won't even answer her phone. I have no idea what to do anymore. Well, she did just reveal to her colleagues what she's actually like. To think that Kristen would barge into the wedding with a wedding dress. It was worse than I was imagining, so it actually made me laugh. <laughs> so is what Kristen said true? You're marrying the hospital director's son? Yes. He's going to be the director after his father. I'm working at a pharmaceutical company currently. That's how we met. Why didn't you tell me sooner? If I had known, this wouldn't have happened. Why did I need to tell you? Didn't we cut ties? Even if I had told you, you probably would have just laughed and said I was lying. But still, you two wanted to ruin it. Anyways, the two of you are garbage for even trying to ruin my wedding in the first place. Stop messing around. This is all your fault. What are you going to do if Kristen can't get to work anymore? She worked so hard to become a doctor. Don't ask me. This is her own doing. Do something about it. Like, say you asked her to do it. Just make it seem like it was no big deal. Tell everyone it was your idea. Why? What do you mean, why? For Kristen's sake, of course. You're her sister, right? What? <laughs> Since when were we such a loving family? <laughs> you treated me like a stranger my entire life, and now this? <laughs> it's pathetic, really. Why should I take the blame for what you and Kristen did? No thanks. What? Why you? Did you forget everything I did for you as a child? You're so ungrateful. I don't care if you think I'm ungrateful. I never once felt grateful for you. And it doesn't even matter what I tell them anymore. I already told them everything. What? They asked me what that was after Kristen ran from the scene. I explained to them in depth as to what kind of childhood I had to put up with and the kind of treatment I received from you two. I even made an effort to look especially sad to gain their sympathy. What? 
They just saw Kristen barge in with a wedding dress, so they didn't have trouble believing me. They sympathized with me. Even my mother-in-law, who couldn't understand my relationship with you two, finally understood. She apologized to me while crying for sending you the invitation. She owes me a big debt, so our relationship will probably work out well. I guess it's thanks to you. <laughs> I'm going off topic. That's the situation, though. Kristen probably won't have a job tomorrow. This isn't a joke! Take back everything you said! Now! What are you going to do if Kristen loses her job because of you? Take responsibility for this. This is your fault. You understand? How is this my fault? You're the ones who underestimated me and tried to ruin my wedding. It's your fault for having a wedding in the first place. It's your fault for not telling us who your fiancé was. You're just an ugly, useless bitch. You ruined our lives. You sound so dumb right now. I don't see a point in arguing with you anymore. Tell Kristen that the hospital director is furious, will you? There's no way she's keeping her job. I wonder if she'll be able to find another job as a doctor. It's a small world, apparently. Rumor is sure to spread. The daughter you put so much effort in raising and helping become a doctor is now homeless. How does it feel? What? This is a joke, right? Since when were we so close as to tell each other jokes? She tried to ruin her boss's wedding. Of course she's going to lose her job. You can't even understand that? But we didn't know! Please, do something about it. If Kristen loses her job, then there'll be no one to support me. Oh, you're depending on Kristen's salary, right? But it's not like I work at my husband's hospital. And I try not to bother him when it comes to work, so I can't really do anything. As you already knew, I'm useless after all. But please, can't you do something? I'll do anything. Help your mother! My mother? Don't make me laugh. Just like you never saw me as your daughter, I never saw you as my mother. I'm tired, so I'm going to bed. Don't contact me anymore. Have fun with the rest of your failure of a life. Goodbye. Trying to ruin my wedding by barging in with a white wedding dress is basically the same as telling everyone I'm an idiot. Those two are really so stupid. After embarrassing herself in front of her colleagues, Kristen locked herself in the house. She stopped going to work either and was eventually fired. Kristen, who hadn't known failure until then, was devastated and lost all of her will. My mother, who was no longer able to rely on Kristen's salary, tried to turn to me for support. But she failed since I blocked all her accounts and she doesn't know where I live. They now get by with the money they had saved up. But apparently, the two of them just argue all day. They surely have more important things to do before arguing, but since they're stupid. As for me, both my husband and his family sympathizes with what I had to put up with as a child, and our relationship is good. I'm living a happy life now that no one is constantly insulting me and treating me like garbage. I look forward to what life has to bring me now. I look forward to what life has to bring from now. Hey David, it's been a while, hasn't it? I think it was like three years ago, right? Uh, is that you, Marge? Hey, old friend. Old friend? Are you kidding me? You really got nerve contacting me. Huh? Come on, David. I know you were probably waiting for me to contact you. Excuse me? What the hell are you talking about? Did you hit your head on the bedpost when you woke up this morning? Relax, David. I'm just screwing with you. You've always been so stuffy. Have a little fun, would you? But I know, you're probably acting this way because in reality, you can't get enough of me, am I right? You really haven't changed one little bit, have you, Marge? You're unbelievable. Have you forgotten that we got divorced because you cheated on me? So that little incident is all forgotten, I see. On top of that, the guy you had an affair with, that guy was married too. 
Do you really think I still have any feelings for someone who cheated on me and without a second thought ruined another family? Yeah, well, I guess that's how you feel about it, huh? Excuse me? What the hell are you talking about? Come off it, David. Don't act so innocent. I know all about what you did. Quit beating around the bush, would you? I have no idea what you're talking about! If you have something to say, make it quick, would you? I'm really busy right now. I don't have time for this crap. That woman you married a little while back? You guys got divorced, right? Huh? Wasn't her name Sandy? No, it was Sandra, right? I heard she was from a real poor family. And a bit of a troublemaker or something. Is that true? And on top of that, she's not very pretty, to say the least. <laughs> Don't you dare make fun of Sandra. You have no right to even mention her name. Apparently, she was just after your status and success. Simply put, she was just after your money. That's why she married you, right? Seems pretty obvious that you got divorced. I mean, it was just a matter of time. <laughs> Wait one second. Back up for a second. What are you talking about, status and success? Are you talking about me? There you go again, David. No use hiding it. I know all about you. I still know people around your neighborhood. They told me all about it. Pardon me? Who the hell told you? And what did they tell you? What are you talking about? It makes no difference. If you think about what our future will be going forward, well, that's all such trivial matters. Stop right there. Our future? Who are you talking about? Do I have to explain everything to you? You and me! That's who I'm talking about! Are you for real? Now why would I want that? We're going to get married again! You must be overjoyed! Oh, how wonderful! I'm overjoyed! Are you nuts? Let me repeat myself. You cheated on me, that's why we got divorced. I have no intention of marrying you. Just put all the past aside, would you? How could I just put all that aside? Anyway, why the hell are you even bringing all this up? This is totally nuts! I haven't told anyone I wanted to get back with you or that I still had any affection for you. What are you talking about? No words are necessary. Your breaking up with Sandra is proof positive. Uh, excuse me. Why is my breaking up with Sandra got to do with me getting back together with you? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? You guys were married for like six months and already you're divorced? Kinda proves that you still love me, right? I really don't understand that logic. So that's the situation. So, when do we get married again? I'm sorry, but we're never getting back together again! I know this is hard for you, David. But really, relax. Everything's gonna be fine. We got our lives back. I'm plenty relaxed, thank you. So, where are you living now? I stopped by the apartment we used to live at, and there was another family living there. Where are you at now? Did you buy a house or something? That it's over on the west side, right? Are you living in the Hillsboro area now? You really think I would tell you where I live? You're delusional. Come on, David. How are we supposed to meet up and discuss this further? I mean, how the hell are we supposed to get remarried if I don't even know where you live? I know it's been three long years since we separated, but like I keep saying, David, relax, I'm back. I'm ready to give you all the loving you need. I have zero intention of getting back together with you, much less meet you face to face. I keep telling you, that's all in the past. Be true to yourself. Ugh, were you always so stubborn? You used to agree with everything I said. What changed after three years? Got so lonely for me that you forgot me? Well, 
I'll remedy that right away. Tell me where you live and I'll be right over. I'm telling you from the bottom of my soul. I have zero affection for you. Zero love. Zero, zero, zero. You got that? Please, David. J just give me the address and sit back and wait for my arrival. You won't regret it. I have to get out of this apartment by the end of the month, so... Come on! Just give me the address and let's get this ball rolling. What do you say? Take your ball somewhere else, please. And don't contact me again. Excuse me? I'm going to block you, so see ya. Hey, David! Are you there? Come on, pick up! Can't believe you really blocked me! How could you? I had to change my line ID because of that. I know you had a hard time expressing your emotions, but this is going too far, David. I know you love me. Just say it! Huh? Not you again, Marge. What'd you do? Go out and buy a new phone? Are you serious? That's right! My contract period wasn't over yet, so it cost me a bit. But it was worth it. The crazy stuff we do for love, huh? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Come on! Hurry up! Open the door! The door? What are you talking about? Don't be surprised. I found out what your actress is, and now I'm here. I brought all my stuff with me. So, come on. Open up. Bottom me. I've been ringing the doorbell for the last ten minutes, and nobody has answered. I know you're in there. Open up! The moving truck is here with me too, so... Could you hurry it up? Are you taking a shower or something? Uh, hold on a second. I haven't heard any doorbell. Nobody outside as far as I can see. Maybe you need to take a cold shower. I'm standing right in front of your door. Take a look through the peephole. You'll see my beautiful face out here. I got all dressed up for this very occasion. Are you looking through the peephole? I'm right here, my love. Yeah, I'm not screwing around. There's nobody out there. I don't see any moving truck outside either. You sure you came to the right place? Pardon me? No way you can't see that big yellow truck outside. That thing sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, you know what? Uh, maybe you went to the wrong house, because I don't see anybody outside. No way. Uh, sure you got your glasses on? I'm sure they said it was the Stanton Mansions out on the West End. Stanton Mansions? What the hell is that? Oh, wait a sec. Oh, yeah. That was a weekly rental place I was at. I moved out of there last week. Uh? Excuse me? Last week? This place is weekly rental? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, after I left my parents' place, I rented that place for about two months. What the hell is all this? What's going on? Hmm, I see. So, you've been snooping around about me all this time and you failed to get the most pertinent info. What the hell are you talking about? Just so you know, I got remarried to Sandra. Excuse me? You what? You just got divorced. How could you get married again so soon? That doesn't make any sense. If you're going to lie, do a better job, would you? It's true, what can I say? No way that's true! That's complete BS! What are you up to? Is this your way of getting rid of me? That's it, isn't it? Just tell me where you live now and let's get hitched again. Stop with all this BS melodrama! Oh boy, I guess I have no choice but to explain the whole thing to you. You remember I told you I had an older sister, right? Yeah... I do recall you saying something about her. Didn't she have trouble with your folks, and she left home after graduating from high school? That sister? You said you hadn't heard from her in years. I never met her. What about her? 
Yeah, when Sandra and I were living at my folks place, she suddenly came home. After three failed marriages, and her kids in tow, a single mom. Three failed marriages? You're kidding me. No, no joke. And with four kids. Holy smokes! Four kids? So that's where it got all complicated. When she moved in and she started treating Sandra a bit harshly. Sandra works at home, so she would have her take care of all four kids while she went out drinking with her friends. She'd take Sandra's things without permission. Makeup, clothes, jewelry, you name it. She was even stealing money out of her purse. Mm, she must have had it pretty hard. But my folks are on my sister's side because of the kids. I mean to have four cute grandkids running around. They are like putty in their hands. As you can imagine, it was pretty tough on me and Sandra. So in order to cut all ties with my folks and save Sandra from this dreary life... So you guys concocted this divorce sham? To actually make them believe it, we actually went through with the divorce and showed them all the legal papers. Huh? Just for that you guys got divorced? Yeah, that was the fastest and easiest way to start clean. I took her maiden name and we started a new life together. I, I was able to escape my family and move out of that hornet's nest and start our new life. A clean slate, so to speak. We figured two months was adequate and we moved out. That was a week ago. Right after we moved out, we remarried. Got all the paperwork done at City Hall and now we're starting our new life. Mm. I see. <laughs> a pretty far-fetched tale. I mean, did you really have to go so far? But, David, I don't see why you picked a not-so-good-looking woman who can't even handle her in-laws. You would be much better off with a beautiful, smart, and experienced... Wink, wink. A woman like me. After hearing all that, are you still insisting on going through with this charade you've been scheming this past few weeks? Of course! Why wouldn't I? You still love me, right? I mean, why continue to act as though you love Sandra? It's just a pretend no love marriage. Way better to end it now. And start anew with a woman you know, love, and can trust, right? Tell her that you love Marge, that you've always loved her, and that you want to marry her, and start a new life with me. Come on, David. I know you feel that way. You do feel that way, don't you? It would be a huge load off of your shoulders if you would just admit it. Okay, then. I guess it's been decided. Let's get the ball rolling. Uh, Marge, you're not listening. I'm ready. Give me the address. I'll be over right away. Hey, Marge, have you been smoking something? Or maybe ate some magic mushrooms? Uh, no, I'm fine. No matter how many times you say it, no matter how you spin it, I can tell you something right now. Sandra and I have no plans to get divorced. We did it once and that was enough. Even though it was fake. Please stop at this, would you? It's starting to get annoying. Please, David, hold on a second. You got divorced because you still love me, right? That's what's going on, am I right? Like I said, it's really getting super annoying. You're delusional. Delusional? Please get it through your head once and for all. I've decided to spend the rest of my life with Sandra, and nobody can change that. Not you, not my folks. We love each other, and that's that. The only reason we divorced was to cut ties with my folks. We succeeded in doing that, and now, as planned, we remarried. That's all there is to it. You have no place in this story. Sorry. Seems straightforward. Why can't you accept that? But you still love me. Right? I keep telling you I have zero affection for a woman who cheated on me and betrayed me. And like you keep insisting, 
I'm not holding some secret love for you or emotionally not able to express my love for you. That's all total BS. I love Sandra and that's that. But it's you who's not listening. You have status and success. You're going to need a beautiful wife like me on your side if you're going to succeed in the future. I'll stand by your side through thick and thin. I don't know where you got your wires all screwed up, but it wasn't me who succeeded. Everyone must be talking about Sandra. She's the one with the brains and this so-called success you keep mentioning. Huh? Pardon me? It's not that I'm doing all that bad. After moving out of my parents' place and starting a new job, my salary has increased and things are looking pretty good. But still, no way I can't match Sandra's annual salary. Huh? Are you serious? I suppose the neighbors saw we were suddenly doing better. My folks went out and bought a new car, fixed up the house a bit. So maybe someone in the neighborhood figured I was suddenly making a lot more money or, as you say, was successful. But all that was because they were sponging off Sandra's income. They could never afford that on their own. No way. Are you really being straight with me? Oh yeah, a lack of research on your part, sorry to say. So that's that. See ya, have a good life. Wait a sec. What the hell am I supposed to do? I can't go back to my parents' place. They kicked me out three years ago after we got divorced and... I already terminated my apartment lease last week. Can't go back there. Buzz, buzz. Please, David, help me. I have no one else to turn to. Boy, I really didn't expect that. With all the troubles with my folks and with my sister, Sandra and I finally worked things out. But all of a sudden, here comes Marge. I later learned that she was heavily in debt due to having to pay a huge settlement to me. There was ample evidence of her adultery. I guess she heard I got divorced and figured she could get back with me and thus get out of paying her debt. I learned later from a friend that she was eventually able to return to her parents' home after pleading with them. What are parents for, right? But it apparently didn't last long. A friend who lives nearby witnessed some arguing in front of the house. It got so out of hand that police were eventually called. Her parents subsequently found a living job for her at some factory back east. As for Sandra and I, we finally moved into our new home and quietly living our life. Hello, is this Mrs. Leon? This is Chris, Sean's fiance. Good evening, Chris. Thanks for coming with Sean and greeting us the other day. It was nothing. About Sean. What is it? It's not him, it's you. What? Did I do something to offend you? I'll tell you this straight. Stop pretending to be his mother when you aren't even related. What? I heard that you're his father's second wife. I don't like how you pretended to be his mother even though you're not. Well, we aren't related by blood, I guess, but... I married his father when he was 13, and we've been family for almost 20 years now. Sean treats me like I'm his mother. I raised him like he was my own son, too. Stop it. It's annoying. Annoying? It's no use trying to make me feel bad for you. I'm not so dumb as to be fooled by such a lame story. You seem to be quite hostile. How you start is important when it comes to things like this, which is why I'm going to say it clearly right now. I'm going to marry Sean, but you aren't related to him, so you're not going to be my mother-in-law. I'm not going to listen to what you, a complete stranger, says. Do you understand? I see. Understood. Don't come to the wedding, either. <laughs> what? The wedding as well? Yes, and the family gathering, too. I don't want to seem nosy, but shouldn't both the parents be there? That isn't a problem. I have it planned out already. Don't come to the wedding. You're just a stranger. I see. I was thinking about deciding how to get along with your relatives once I got to know you better. 
but I didn't think I would be shunned upon this much just because I'm Sean's stepmother. As long as you understand. Oh, that reminds me. Don't tell the others you won't come to the family gathering or the wedding yet, okay? Why? I have a surprise plan for Sean and his father before the family gathering, which is why I want you to not say anything unnecessary. What kind of surprise? I'm not going to tell you, the complete stranger. I won't forgive you if you tell anyone, okay? Mom? Did you hear from Chris about today? Huh? Oh, hi, Sean. What do you mean? Me and Dad were called to a nearby restaurant by Chris. She said that there's something she needs to tell us. But she wouldn't come even after the time we agreed to meet. So I wondered if she told you anything. I haven't heard anything. Oh, I see. I'll tell you if I hear anything. Thanks. Why? Why didn't they like my surprise? Did you bribe them or something? Chris, what's the matter? Is it fun ruining my surprise? Isn't this a bit rude? Just because you won't be able to act like his mother anymore doesn't mean you can do such a thing. The surprise you told me about the other day was today? Judging by your tone, it didn't work? Stop playing dumb. You knew about it and ruined it. But I didn't do anything. I don't even know what this surprise of yours is. What? You ruined it precisely because you knew. Stop lying. Can you please stop assuming I did something? Besides, I only found out you called Sean and his father 20 minutes ago when Sean sent me a text. What? Sean? He told me you didn't come even after the agreed meeting time, so he asked if I had heard anything from you. The person I was with was late, which is why I was late as well. So there was someone you wanted Sean and my husband to meet? Both Sean and his father noticed immediately who it was, got mad, and left as soon as I brought her. The two of them are usually so kind. There's not many people they would treat like that. Just who did you bring? Miss Duncan. Miss Duncan? Oh, I see. No wonder they got mad. What? Why? She's Sean's real mother and your husband's former wife who he wouldn't have divorced if it wasn't for you. She is Sean's real mother, but where did you get the idea that my husband didn't want to get divorced with Catherine? She said it herself. Why did you contact her in the first place? You don't know her, right? I had the thought that he would be happy if I reunited him with his actual mother when I heard that you were his stepmother. So I hired a detective agency and... You hired a detective agency? Then I heard from Miss Duncan about the divorce. What did she tell you? She told me that the reason they got divorced was because Mr. Leon cheated on her with you, and that she wasn't able to get custody of Sean since she was struggling financially at the time. She also said that she hasn't met Sean ever since and cried. You didn't ask Sean or his father about this. You could have even asked me. Huh? I didn't ask you because I knew there was no way you would tell the truth. And what makes you think so? Because you're the one who stole Mr. Leon from Miss Duncan, right? Huh? There's no way I would be able to trust you. The reason for the divorce. I don't want a woman like that to pretend to be Sean's mother and congratulate us on our marriage either. I was planning on making Mr. Leon reflect on his past mistakes by reuniting him with Miss Duncan. And in the end, convince him on agreeing to remove you from the wedding. You keep saying all these things. But you didn't even bother asking anyone other than Miss Duncan, someone you just met. Well, she's probably much more trustworthy than someone who would steal a husband from his wife. <laughs> and who told you that I stole Sean's father from Miss Duncan? Only her, right? You're making a big misunderstanding. Huh? Misunderstanding? Yes, quite a big one. You went out of your way and hired a detective agency. But you failed to do the simplest thing. What's your problem? Sean and his father just got home. I'll let you talk to Sean from here. Chris, I'm canceling the wedding. Why? I just wanted to reunite you with your real mother. No one said to do such a thing. Huh? 
I don't know what she told you, but it wasn't my dad who cheated, it was her. Huh? Dad used to go on a lot of business trips. She used this as an opportunity to bring guys into the house. One day, Dad got home earlier than was planned and found out. That's when they got divorced. Maybe that's a lie? Mrs. Leon told you this, right? Dad and Mrs. Leon only met half a month after the divorce. And they only started going out another half a year later. What? There are a lot of people who can prove this. But most importantly, I remember it happening myself. Not like I want to remember, though. That means you didn't want to meet Miss Duncan? Obviously. But I had no idea she was like that. So I thought it would be better to invite your real mom instead of her to the wedding. It's not like I meant any harm. But you did, didn't you? What? A few days later, after I told you that Mrs. Leon was my father's second husband, I accidentally overheard you talking on the phone with one of your friends. You said something like, oh, this woman pretending to be Sean's mother is definitely no good. I'll find a way to get them divorced. You heard? You hadn't met her yet at the time, so I thought you would understand she was a good person when she did. Which is why I didn't say anything. To think that she would bring that woman just to get my parents divorced. But... You only believed what Miss Duncan said because you wanted to believe it so you could get my parents divorced. That's why you didn't even think to doubt her. But it's a known fact that stepmothers are evil. Huh? Which is why I wanted to save you from that terrible woman. What is that nonsense? No matter how you look at it, what you did was a terrible deed based on a misconception fueled by your spite. Huh? There are stepmothers who raise their children like their own, and families who love each other despite not being related by blood. Mrs. Lyon, my mother, is the one who taught me this. What? That, that's impossible. It seems like you even looked down on my father thinking he was a cheater. I don't think I can get along with someone who sees my parents like that. I don't want to cancel the marriage. If you just accept now, there's no need to pay any sort of alimony, as nothing's technically happened yet. I think it would be best for the both of us. No! Sorry, but I don't feel like marrying you anymore. I said I don't want to cancel the marriage. It's not like you don't like me anymore, right? What? Of course I don't like you anymore. Huh? Anyways, I'll set up a meeting so we can talk things through face to face. The both of us aren't being logical right now, so it's probably best if we cool down for a bit. Bye. You don't like me anymore? It seems Sean telling Chris that he didn't like her anymore had a big effect on her. Ultimately, she seemed to stop caring and agreed to cancel the marriage. But the real hell awaited her after all of this. Apparently, Miss Duncan and her new husband barged into Chris's apartment. They keep telling her to support them financially now that she's Sean's wife, even though she keeps saying the marriage was canceled. Her relationship with her parents was ruined after they found out about the incident, so she has no one to rely on anymore. She gave up and is now supporting Miss Duncan and her husband, two unemployed middle-aged people who are basically strangers to her. No one tries to help her, and apparently she can be frequently seen crying day and night while working her butt off. Hey, Amy, I noticed that you weren't going to work these past few days. But I didn't know that you quit. Huh? A friend of mine who works at your company told me. He said that you told him you needed to quit because you were busy taking care of my parents. Yes, that's right. Which means that you're a housewife now. Yes, I guess so. What is it suddenly, Clifford? You tend to legion off of my salary, don't you? What? Of course you are. You knew I would stop you from quitting your job if you had told me beforehand, so you did it without telling me. You were planning on telling me after the dust had settled, didn't you? What? But didn't I tell you? Huh? When? I think it was three or four months ago. Your sister who took care of your parents had to move to another town since her husband got a new job. Which meant that no one would be able to take care of your parents since we both had jobs. We needed to hire someone to take care of them for us. But you told me that I should just do it myself to save the money. Well, it was the obvious choice since you already had experience. 
You even disagreed when I said that I would pay for the nursing service. That's when I told you that I would be forced to quit my job. To which you replied, that's your responsibility. You should think this through carefully. I then told you that I decided to quit my job. And you said, stop telling me everything you do. It's annoying. I even made sure it was okay with you the day before I turned in my letter of resignation. But again, you said basically the same thing, which is why I stopped telling you about what I did. What? That's not what I meant when I said, think this through carefully. I was trying to tell you not to blame your job for not having enough time to take care of my parents. Huh? I meant you need to do both. How am I supposed to take care of your parents while I'm at work? I'm repeating myself, but... No one will be able to do the work your sister did for us while we're at work. You said no when I suggested hiring someone to do it for us. Even when I said I would pay for it with my own money. The only remaining option was for me to quit my job. I'm telling you to do both. That's what I meant when I said it's your responsibility. You just conveniently used my words to quit your job. What you're saying is ridiculous. Anyways, I'm not gonna let you become a housewife. Huh? Well, I did think that we would be able to get by with just your salary if we were tight with money. You see? That's not what I meant. I wouldn't have quit if I thought I would be able to do both. Huh? I didn't want to quit my job. I didn't want to give up my career. Besides, why are you making me and your sister do all the work in the first place? Isn't it your parents? Huh? How am I the problem here? I have no idea how to take care of them, and there's no way I'll be able to do it once I get home tired from work. But it was the same for me until I quit my job. Wait, why are you getting mad? It's your fault for not being able to do both, isn't it? I'm not to blame for you being so useless. If you've got the time to argue with me, then go and get your job back instead. Then let me hire a nursing service. No, it's a waste of money. Then who's going to take care of your parents while I'm at work? I told you to do both. That's impossible. If you don't get a job and continue relying on my money for any longer, then we're getting divorced. Huh? We don't want to get divorced and take care of my parents while working. I'm not going to let you be a housewife. Get a job or else. <laughs> get it? Hi, Amy. Is now a good time? Hi, Scarlet. Your parents are asleep right now, so I'm free. I see. I'm sorry you had to do this. It can't be helped. Your husband got a new job, right? But you had to quit your job because of it, right? Um... I got a call from Clifford complaining about you. Complaining? He said that you made having to take care of your parents an excuse to quit your job and leech off of his money. I see. I pretended to agree with him to make him talk, but is it true he refused to let you hire a nursing service? Yes, it's true. When I tell him I'll have no choice but to quit my job, he always replies by saying to do both and not be a parasite. He keeps saying the same nonsense over and over. You should get your job back, Amy. What? Use a nursing service if you have to. Heck, why not even hire a maid? But... You can just have them come while Clifford's away at work. I'll give you some of my money as well. Even if you get caught, just say it was my idea. Well, I can't really just go back to my old company. I'll need to find a new job. My husband will help you with that. What? You see, my parents talked to me about feeling bad about you having to do all the work taking care of them. Your parents? 
They feel sorry you have to put up with Clifford's behavior. Let's talk about it online in the near future. Without Clifford, obviously. Got it. Yo, Amy, you're finding a job, right? I'm not gonna let you be a parasite and lead you off of my salary. But I already have a job. Huh? I didn't tell you because you get mad when I do, but I found a job I can do from home. What? From home? <laughs> but it still looks like taking care of your parents while working will be difficult. I'm busy with work, so I'm fine if we get divorced. Talk to your sister about what to do with your parents, not me, from now on. What? There's no use threatening me. I'm not gonna nurse my parents. What's this job you're doing from home anyways? There's no way it pays much. That means you're still being a parasite, so... What you're saying isn't even a threat. Hey, Amy. How are things over there? Hello, Scarlet. I've been able to focus on work thanks to the helper who's been coming since yesterday. I'm glad you're able to apply the skills you learned at your previous job in your new one. Yeah, thanks to you. I'll tell you this now, but... When I quit my job, I missed the sense of accomplishment I would get after a day's work. But it seems working freelance suits me better, which is why I'm having so much fun now. I'm glad. Now on to business. About my parents. The preparation's finished, so I'm thinking about the end of next month. Understood. I'll get ready for it as well. Yep, I'm counting on you. Oh, one more thing. I've got big news. A friend of mine who works at the same company as Clifford told me that Clifford made a huge mistake three months ago and will be fired at the end of the month after the paperwork's taken care of. What? Seriously? Looks like he didn't tell you. Yup, I just heard of this now. So this is why he didn't want me to quit my job. Amy, what is your meaning of this? What? I just got home, but all the stuff is gone. Even mom and dad aren't here. What is this? Your parents said they sold the house. Well, they sold it. Why? They said that they're going to enter a nursing home. What? They've been talking about it for a while. Your sister took care of it when they told her their decision. They're going to pay for part of it with the money they got by selling the house. Didn't you hear from Scarlet? I wasn't told anything. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I only found out about it recently myself. Your parents talked to Scarlet about it, not me. I thought it wasn't something that I should intervene in. But you should have told me. But don't you always get mad? Fine, just get a job. What? There's no reason for you not to get a job now that you don't have to take care of my parents, right? I'm not gonna let you leech off of my salary. But didn't I tell you I'm working from home? Didn't I tell you to get an actual job? What you're doing is basically the same as being a housewife. I've been able to get a lot of orders thanks to an acquaintance, so my salary is basically the same as before. What? Also, after thinking it through, I decided that I want to get divorced. Huh? I actually hired a nursing service to take care of your parents two months back. What? Didn't I tell you it was a waste of money? Your sister paid for part of it. Like you said, doing both on your own is hard. But you're going to divorce me if I don't, right? I did say that, but... I'm going to get even more busy from now on. But you don't have to take care of my parents anymore. Yes, but... It's true that I used a nursing service, so it's fine if you divorce me. But I quit my job! What was that? Something happened and I had to quit my job. If we get divorced now, I'll... 
Oh, you were intending on leeching off of my salary? Huh? That's what you always say, right? Don't tell me that it's okay if you do it, but not me. Yes, but... Well, you're going to get divorced anyway, so... Wait! No. But... I'm going to turn in the divorce papers now. Amy! That was the day Clifford got fired from work. Obviously, we planned both me and his parents timed it this way. His parents are now receiving great care at a nursing home and are living a peaceful life. They sent me a letter thanking me for taking care of them until now. Clifford, on the other hand, according to a neighbor, he just sits on the porch and stares, not doing anything all day. It doesn't seem that he's looking for another job, but I heard from somewhere that he's being sued by his former company. He was taken away by a black van one day, never to be seen again. Apparently, he now works somewhere to pay for the money he owes. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.